hide and seek. I love that game. My voice sounds interesting. Hide and seek was one of the most thrilling games for me when I was a child. And I loved to be the seeker. It was so intense. You would go out or in, and it's like all your senses were heightened. Everything was moving in slow motion. You could hear sounds better. You could smell better. You could see better. And then in a moment, your spidey senses would be tingling. And you would notice something that was out of the ordinary. And the excitement would build. And you finally found who you were seeking. And it was awesome, right? Because there's that feeling of, I found you. You didn't hide good enough. But when you are a seeker, you are intent on finding the objective. And when you are playing hide and seek... You are completely focused, as you are the seeker, in finding the person. Letting nothing stop you. Using every sense that you have to find the person. Seek. What are you seeking? Who are you seeking? We've been looking at James. Again, James, the leader of the church, one of them in Jerusalem. And he is looking over the church and he's saying, why is no one seeking God? Why is no one seeking? Why are they not going to him? The whole theme that we've seen in the book of James is prove it. You say you believe in Jesus Christ. Prove it. Your actions speak the truth about what your words say. Actions are louder than words. We say we believe in Jesus. We say we are followers of Jesus Christ. But our actions reveal the truth. He has laid out for us already that we saw in week one. Are you submitted? Are you submitted? Have you given him everything that you are? Is he everything to you? We saw last week the troubles and trials. Why do we have them? To conform us into the image of Christ. So have joy in troubles. Have joy in trials. Because you know that God loves you and he is conforming you into the image of his son. Last week as people were leaving, more than anything I got, how do I do that? I got the knowledge, but how can I really apply it? You know what? James wrote more verses, and he wrote them with purpose. And he follows the trials with the next verse that we're going to be looking at. We're going to look at three verses today. And this section of verses is bookend with more trials. In the midst of trials, seek God for wisdom. I can't give you the magic formula. How do I do it? Do A, B, C, D. There's only one formula. 
and it is supernatural, and it comes from God. How do I do it? Go to him for wisdom. Go to God. I wish I could impart something, but nothing comes from me. God will give you wisdom to navigate the trials and troubles of your life, giving you proper perspective of why you have them. Allowing you to understand that you can have joy in trials. It doesn't, again, it doesn't make sense when I say it. It doesn't make sense to me. That's why I need him. I need God to give me wisdom to understand and see that I'm supposed to have joy in trials. It comes from nowhere else but God. Seek God. You ready for the invitation? <laughs> Seek God. Matthew 6:33. We're going to jump ahead. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Who do we seek first? Who do we seek first? Who do we seek first? Do you? Remember, this is a confrontational book. The messages are going to be confrontational. We need God's word to convict us of our sin. Conviction is good. Remember that. The toes being stepped on, the hearts being stabbed. It's God's spirit working in you. If you were in our Bible study hour at 930... We talked about that. Confession is good. It's good to confess your sins. He wants you to. Why do we see it as a bad thing? It's God's love, His forgiveness, His grace, His mercy. Go to Him, be honest. God, here is my sin. And He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. Let his spirit run all over you. Do you know how hard it is to prepare a ser sermons like this? As the Holy Spirit slaps me across the face a thousand times and says, who are you to tell anybody anything? I'm not anybody. It's Jesus. It's one beggar showing another beggar where to find food. There is nothing in me but Jesus that is good. Let the Spirit work in you. Because He loves you. And He doesn't want to leave you broken. He doesn't want to leave you lost. He wants you to, compl to be complete. He wants you to be forgiven. He wants you to be whole. James chapter 1 verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God. Oh God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the 
trials of life. For in them you refine our faith. For in them you conform us into the image of Christ. So in them we can find joy. God, we need wisdom to understand. Wisdom not of this world. Wisdom not of man's words or opinions, but of you. From you. You alone are our source. You alone offer hope, clarity in this life. God, we turn to you. God, we cling to you. God, we seek you. God, reveal yourself to us today. In and through your word, show us who you are. Draw us to you. Continue to conform us into the image of your Son. God, we love you because you first loved us. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Seek first the kingdom of God. Any benefits from a relationship with God come once we are submitted and trusting Him. Any benefits we receive from God come once we are submitted and trusting Him. Seeking. How do we prove our faith in seeking? We see that number one, the subject of our seeking is wisdom. El tema de búsqueda, búsqueda, búsqueda. Es una palabra duro para decir. Sabiduría. ¿Cuántos hablan español? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Unos. Even if you don't speak Spanish, write the Spanish down. Learn something. It's good for you. It stretches your brain. In this passage specifically, we see seeking, the seeking we are to do to God is for wisdom. Very specific. Not asking for riches and fame and glory. Not asking for healing. In the trials of life, we go to God and what do we ask for? Wisdom. James 1 5 again. Did you have time to write all both those down? If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Last week we took an in depth look at the purpose of troubles and trials. We've talked about it already this morning and the trust that is needed. I want to read another passage to you that helps summarize this because it is a hard thing to wrap our minds around. Why does God say, I joy in my trials? Why? We struggle with this. Joy and trials don't go together in our minds. 1 Peter 1 says this, You rejoice in this, Even though now for a short time, if necessary, you suffer grief in various trials so that the proven character of your faith, more valuable than gold, which, though perishable, is refined by fire. Why? That it may result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though not seeing him, now you believe in him and you rejoice with inexpressible and glorious joy. How? 
We read it. We heard it. How do we apply it? James 1.5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God. I don't understand it, you say. You know what? I don't either. It is not natural to the human mind. So you need wisdom. Go to God. Ask him. Why do we ask God? Proverbs 2, 6 says this, For the Lord gives wisdom. He gives it. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. God is the source of wisdom. God is the source, not man. I'm going to shock you. Are you ready? Not your pastor. A lot of nods of you. I knew that. <laughs> Have you talked to that guy before? <laughs> Eyes up. It's God. He's the source. Go to Him. God, give me wisdom. And then verse 5 continues. We go to God for wisdom. We don't go to man. Don't go to Google. How-to books. Go to God. Pray. Who gives to all liberally? This means generously, unwaveringly, unwaveringly, without hesitation. Do you know anybody that gives like that? Especially something of that much value. How much value is wisdom? Priceless. And he gives it liberally. We give begrudgingly out of our leftovers. And God says, the most valuable thing you can have is, first of all, himself. And then he wants to give you wisdom. He wants to give it to you liberally. Freely. Openly. Openly. It's like a child who is hungry. They can't provide wisdom, or excuse me, food for themselves. They don't have a job. When they're hungry, where do they go? Parents. Mom, Dad, I'm hungry. And any parent in their right mind, the obvious response is, let's go get some food. Let me feed you. You have a need that only I can provide. And I want you to be healthy, and I want you to be strong, and I'm going to give you food. God knows we need wisdom. He knows only He provides it. And He wants to give it to us. It says, He gives without reproach in verse 5 he gives without reproach he doesn't rebuke us for asking oh here they are again here they are again asking for wisdom one more time i wish they would leave me alone he is not that way he knows he's the source he knows we don't have it he knows it can only come from him and so he gives without reservation not begrudgingly it is a gift god wants to willingly give god wants us to be wise you know that right and he knows where the wisdom comes from <laughs> he sees us running around and it's just if they would just come to me for wisdom how does the verse end and it will be given to him Praise the Lord. But will we go? Will we ask? Will we seek? As we become aware of our need of wisdom, especially to view trials and troubles in the right way, we can only do that with wisdom from God. Is that clear? Have I beat that to death enough? If you're struggling in your trials, in your troubles, and you're not finding joy, and you don't understand how God is using them, and you don't understand that he is using them to conform you to the image of Christ. Maybe you've heard it, 
but it's not real here, the next step is to go and ask for wisdom. That's your action step. Ask God for wisdom. Do it. Go. El paso de acción es pídele sabiduría a Dios. Wisdom. Ask God for wisdom. Does anybody struggle in their trials? Does anybody not struggle in their trials? Tim's the only one that doesn't. Both, both hands. We all struggle, and sometimes we don't see. How do we go? Number two, the method of seeking in faith. El método de búsqueda en fe. Es solamente en fe. Go in faith. In faith. We seek wisdom in faith. Do we believe who God is and what he says he will do. Do we believe who God is and what he says he will do? We see a qualification or an issue brought up in our asking. The manner of asking matters the manner of asking matters if you have somebody that comes up to you in a disrespectful way and says I want this from you how is your response going to be to that person if you do it it's going to be begrudgingly right When we ask disrespectfully, in an arrogant tone, in an expectative, prideful way, James 1, 6, but let him ask in faith. First, you must have faith in God. Through Jesus Christ. That's why we started where we started with the submitted idea. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Are you his child? Have you put your faith in him? Have you repented of your sins? That's another theme we hit at 9.30. Make sure you're coming to that hour. Then, whenever you go to God, your father, like the child with food, you're going in faith. A child, my child will come to me and say, I'm hungry. With faith that I'm going to give them food. Unless it's dinners in 30 minutes and you got to wait. Because <laughs> mama's making dinner and you're not going to spoil your dinner. But there's a trust factor there. In Greek, the word faith and trust are used almost interchangeably. To ask in faith is to expect God to do in your life the supernatural, which only he is capable of. You hear that? You're with me? Yes. 
To ask in faith is to expect God to do in your life the supernatural, which only he is capable of. The kind of faith that when we pray for wisdom, we are expectant, not in an arrogant way, to receive it because we know who he is and we know he is true to his promises. So I'm going to go to God and say, God, in my trial, in my trouble, I need wisdom that only comes from you. I don't have it. And I'm trusting that you're going to give it to me because you said you would. And you do what you say. And you are who you are. So I'm coming to you in faith. Hebrews 11.6 But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is. Believe that He is God. Do you truly believe? And that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Can it get any clearer? No doubting. Only through faith. Believing in Him. James 1, 6, it says, And with no doubting. Not doubting the ability of God. Not doubting that it will come to pass. Remember, we're talking about wisdom here. That's the context. God is not a genie to give you a new car, a new house. We go to him specifically, not doubting that he will give it to us. He will give us wisdom. One pastor said this. He said, what the Christian needs is God's wisdom to understand his purpose in placing him amidst these continuous trials. You have continuous trials, right? Right? It is that wisdom that God will never refuse. If you are given the patience and maturity and the wisdom to use your adverse circumstances, God has answered your prayer. And the thing that you should not doubt for a single moment is that God will give you these. Look at the doubter as verse 6 continues. It says, And he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. The doubter is unsteady, has no control over themselves or their emotions. Flipped around constantly. No stability. Constant fretting. The one who has faith and trust in God God brings joy and stability in troubles because they have God's wisdom to understand the purpose of the trial and the trouble. It does not mean it makes it easy. It doesn't mean that pain is not attached to the trial and the trouble or sadness or difficulty. Those things come with the trial and the trouble. But I can find joy in them because God has given me wisdom to understand that my trial and my trouble, all things work together for good. There is no good things and there is no bad things. With God, if you are a believer in him, there are only good things in your life because he is using everything to have less and less of you and more and more of Jesus. Less of you is better. Do you know how I know that? Because less of me is better. The less Jonathan is in Jonathan's way, the better. The more he gets rid of Jonathan and the more he puts Jesus, the better. He is using all things in your life to conform you into the image of his son. So we joy in all things. We're not joying for the pain. We're joying for what the pain accomplishes. To get rid of me and to put in more Jesus. The action step. 
trust. We ask in faith, so we trust that God will give it. Are you trusting that he's going to give you wisdom? To navigate your trials and your troubles. We all are overwhelmed with trials and troubles of this life. All of us. God will give you wisdom in them. If you go and you trust, God will give it. Trust, God will give it. The paso de acción es confía en que Dios lo dará. Trust, faith, they go together. Number three, the character of seeking. James doubles down on this in verse 7 and verse 8. What is the character of the one who is seeking? Committed. Committed completely to God. It's not stuck between this world and God. Does not have divided loyalty between this world and God. That's why we started where we did. We submitted. Is your identity in Jesus alone? If it's not and your loyalty is divided with this world and with Jesus, and you live for this world, and you desire this world, your loyalty is divided. El carácter de búsqueda es comprometido. James 1.7 says, for, not, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. The doubter here gets a strong judgment. He says, your mind is divided when it comes to trusting God and shows a disloyalty towards God. It's the idea of those that pray. He says, God, if you're there, that's already doubting that he exists. It's the, those that come to God only in need. Those who aren't living a daily life with him. They can expect to receive nothing from God. Where is your loyalty? Where is your commitment to following Jesus? Because if it's not 100%, there is no in-between. There is no in-between. You're either following or you're not. You're either committed or you're not. This is not a game. This is not a game. We don't dip our toes into Christianity when we need to. It's Jesus and it's nothing else. Did you hear that? It is Jesus and nothing else. God will not share his glory. There is salvation in nobody else. There is a season coming up this year. And I know this is not going <laughs> to... This may not land well. I hear believers... Speak the name of men more than they do the name of Jesus Christ. If your, if your hope is in a house that is colored white, oh man, there is no salvation there. Is there salvation there? Can that save you? Who can save you? Listen, remember who you are. Remember who you represent. We are not of this world. That doesn't mean that we don't go out and vote. But when I hear the names of men out of people that say they follow Jesus Christ, and I'm not speaking specifically here, I'm talking the church in this country in general. Why will they speak the name of a man, but they'll never speak the name of Jesus Christ? 
What name comes out of your mouth more than anything else? It should be nothing other than the name of Jesus Christ. Because where is their hope? I'm not sorry. Matthew 6, 24, Jesus himself, no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. So we do a self-examination. Am I fully committed to God? Am I fully committed to Jesus? Examine yourself. And what do you find? If you find anything else, we talked about it this morning, repent. Confess your sins to God. Go to him. James later talks about this double-minded man, this person who is wavering in their stability and commitment to God. It says, cleanse your hands in James 4. A Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. You're either committed or you're not. Examine yourself. Go to God fully committed or expect to receive nothing from him. Action step. Keep a repentant spirit. In our class this morning, what we talked about is the tasks that are left incomplete. Do we have any list makers who love checking off the boxes? Box number one, confess your sins. Don't even start your day. You want help from God throughout your day? You know he knows your sins, right? It's not like you're keeping something from him that he doesn't know. Go to him in honesty. Keep a repentant spirit. Constantly self-examination. God, is there anything in me that is not committed to you? Forgive me. I turn from that. I no longer trust that. And I turn to you and I trust you. Genuine sorrow in the areas in my life that are not committed to him. God, remove it all. And give me Jesus. El paso de acción es esto, mantener un espíritu arrepentido, constantly repentant. That's all I got. Now we respond. This is your time. Listen, truth is hard. I want to be honest with you again. Man, it killed me putting this together. As God revealed place after place after place in my life. Use that. Take it. Time after time when I was going over this, I had to go, God, here's another area. <laughs> Lord, here's another sin. He is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin. Oh, praise God. He's so good. He loves you. He gave his son for you. To die on the cross? To shed his blood? He gave the blood of his son, the life of his son, so we could be forgiven. He died the life of his son. Through the power of the Father, he raised him from the dead. Victory over death. Listen to me. You have hope today. No matter where you find yourself in what we talked about, there is hope today because God loves you and because Jesus is alive. Bow your heads and close your eyes.